<laughs> One day, I learned how to listen. And when I say I learned how to listen, what I mean is, I learned how to enter a complex situation with a posture of humility. That wasn't my MO up to that day. Seven years ago, I stepped on a sketchy boat on Lake Volta in northern Ghana, West Africa. The reason I was stepping on that sketchy boat was because I was on a mission to talk with slave owners, notorious for using kids on Lake Volta in the fishing trade. Let me tell you a little bit about who I was when I was stepping on that sketchy boat. At the age of 31, I was recruited as a director over three departments um, at Barclay Card International, north of London, England, uh, which was awesome. And being an expat is pretty sweet, so you get your rent paid for, you get your car paid for, you're kind of like rolling in it. So at that point in life, I was super ambitious. I was very career driven. I didn't really think about helping people. Um, mostly I spent my weekends going to Greece and um, buying Prada. So I brought my Prada handbag to Ghana. <laughs> it was back in the hotel room, not on the boat with me. Um, so the person that I was when I stepped on that sketchy boat was someone who was an American educated woman with a self-righteous indignation and hero complex, the only someone who can impulse buy a $2,000 handbag could muster. We went out on the lake and I met some of the kids that were used as slaves. Some of them were as young as five years old. They worked usually 14 to 16 hours a day and they often only had one meal. When we talked with them, um, some of them couldn't swim. They talked a little bit about uh, eels and um, what they'd seen their friends go through. It was definitely not an easy life. As we pulled up to Lala on this sketchy little boat, there were seven of us, white women, mostly from Texas, me from Ohio, and a Canadian guy, our interpreter and a Ghanaian. And so we were coming to this village straight out of National Geographic. Um, the entire village came around us to, to watch us talk with these fishermen. So if you imagine in your mind whatever preconceived notion you have of a slave owner and what that sounds like and what that means, you get some little inkling of feel of walking into that village ready for a conversation. As we sat down in the center and the whole village was standing there watching us, we asked questions through the interpreter and it was kind of like this. How could you? How dare you? These kids should be in school. Why don't you find another way to make money? Why would you do this to these kids? So let me tell you what went down. About 15 minutes into us asking those questions, the interpreter interrupted us and said, okay, they've been really polite and they've answered your questions, now they have some questions for you. So, thinking about who I was at that moment, literally the thought that went through my mind was, what, they have questions for us? And so this, I'll paraphrase because this is how I heard it, uh, coming out, um, the fisherman asked the question, well, we've diversified our livestock so that we can multiply our income across the, um, but we're having a problem getting it to market and having consistent prices. What's your suggestion for us? The second question is, well, I know that America is really generous, so you give a lot of money to our government, but they don't always pass it down to the school teachers, which means the teachers don't get paid, so they don't show up to school. So although we'd like to send these kids to school, we'd also like to send our own kids to school. What's your recommendation on what we should do about that? As I sat there and listened to these questions and these fishermen, and I love the look on this man's face because I think it kind of captures the moment. 
I thought to myself, I can't answer these questions. I've got 10 years of banking in my background. This is a little more complicated than I thought when I stepped on that boat. The power of listening allows you to humbly enter a situation and maybe think about what is complicated and how do you address it. As I left Lala that day, um, we were stepping back into the sketchy boat, headed back to Ketakrachi. I was looking back as the little kids were waving at me, and I thought, I wouldn't survive 24 hours in Lala unless somebody took deep compassion on me and showed me how. And in that moment, it changed me. And so as I moved from that, I spent the next four years fighting human trafficking and slavery. So I worked with over 100 artisans in Ghana, in Thailand, in Cambodia. And what I learned from that moment about how important it is to enter into this situation without assumptions, I was able to go into Cambodia and work in a village that started out with 13 kids, hand it over, and now it's over 200. I was able to listen to a woman in a brothel in Thailand talk about how terrified she was to prostitute her body, but she needed to because her dad needed surgery. What about the man who was buying her? What was his story? And he'd flown all the way from Germany to do that. If his wife had died from cancer, what was he going to do? If you can listen to someone's story, and you can start to open that uh, dialogue, open up your mind, the possibility for healing is there. As I work in Akron today, having done four years of anti-trafficking and now working with refugees, I get to hear stories all the time. And in the season of tension and walking in it, it's super exciting and slightly unnerving. So I get to hear stories and sit down with a Muslim Iraqi man, talk about how he trained 800 soldiers for the US military in Iraq. I get to sit down with a Syrian asylee, talk about how he's, he's afraid for his brothers. He's staying out of trouble while he's here in Akron because his life depends on it. And that night he says, because you listen to me, I can sleep in peace. I get to go to Hudson and talk to women who are genuinely terrified of those exact same Muslim refugees and hear her talk about why she is afraid and then address that. And I think within us, we all have a certain longing to hear and be heard. So if the questions that you want to hear are, I see you, I hear you, your story is meaningful and important to me. It's like a Jesus-style Imago day. So I challenge you to enter into the situations that are maybe above your pay grade. Don't be afraid of them. Just listen. Thank you.